cereals, fruit juice, and cosmetic effects. Wherever you live, chances are that most of the fluoride in your diet comes from pesticides, fertilizers, air pollution, and prescription drugs. Young children who use toothpaste without supervision or consume ready-to-eat breakfast cereals and fruit juices are especially at risk. Sixty years ago, only about 10% of children who used one part per million fluoridated water developed the very mildest forms of dental fluorosis, not visible except to the trained eye of a dentist. Today, mild dental fluorosis is considered the norm in the United States, and for many years, dentists have been making more money fixing the damage caused by too much fluoride than by fixing the damage caused by tooth decay. At the same time, the U.S. government has decreed that no matter how badly stained and pitted your child's teeth are, it's not really an adverse health effect. It's only a cosmetic effect that occurs when infants and young children ingest more than one milligram of fluoride daily. The problem is, until the permanent teeth begin to come in, there's no way to know what's going on with the developing dental enamel and no practical way to know how much fluoride a child is getting each day from the things they eat and drink. The 1991 results of the United Kingdom Total Diet Study showed that tea was the major source of dietary fluoride for adults in that country. 1.3 milligrams of the total daily intake of 1.8 milligram. More recently, analysis of ordinary black or green tea shows you can now get 6 milligrams per cup. Welcome to Wonderland. I'd like you to meet Alice and the Rabbit. Once upon a time, the safety of water fluoridation was based on the assumption that people would get about 1 to 1 and a half milligrams of fluoride daily from all sources combined. They told us not to exceed 4 milligrams per day, or we might eventually reach the crippling stage of skeletal fluorosis. But now that we can get 6 milligrams of fluoride per cup of tea, and almost 8 milligrams from pesticide residues, safety is still guaranteed not based on any new or even old safety studies, but simply because Uncle Sam said so. Unlike most chemical compounds that pollute our food and water supply, fluoride is ubiquitous. Its increasing presence in virtually everything we eat and drink is protected by an outdated policy born over 60 years ago in order to minimize environmental and health concerns perceived by Uncle Sam to be petty, costly, and potentially crippling to the nation itself. Fluoride-rich phosphate rock is used to some extent in the production of phosphates used in the manufacture of baking powders and is also the source of calcium or phosphorus used in many drugs and mineral supplements. Unfortunately, you won't see the word fluoride on the label. By law, they cannot add fluoride, but if it's already hidden in other ingredients, no one has to tell. No one is required to tell you how many times the corn, rice, oats, or wheat in your diet was fumigated with sulfuryl fluoride before leaving the warehouse for packaging or processing. No one is required to tell you the hamburger, hot dogs, salami, corned beef, and other processed meats that you buy at the grocery are usually high in fluoride because the meat itself was separated from the bone by machine rather than by hand. No one is required to tell you not to give a young child Welch's grape juice, even though it usually contains a huge amount of fluoride and could cause several adverse health effects, including disfiguring damage to developing dental enamel. No doctor is going to warn you that your antibiotic or other prescription drug has enough fluoride in it to cause fibromyalgia. Most healthcare professionals didn't hear about it in school, so they never give it a thought. Why didn't they hear about it in school? Well, as usual, it's the money, honey.